All right, I'm joined now by two of, unfortunately, what became uh, Limerick Rugby's finest exports, I think people would argue, uh, Sean Conan and Owen Redden, lads. Thanks very much for taking the time to join us and support the Nostro game and aid of uh, various charities around Limerick. I'm repeating myself, but the link is in the description. Please donate if you can. Uh, Sean, we might start with you. You're the first uh, current player that we've spoken to. So tell us a little bit about how the last couple of months have gone. How have you found being um, away from the training centre and off the pitch for such an extended period of time? Um, it's been, it's been had, its, had its challenges. Um, been tough at, in periods, I suppose, training by yourself at home is something you have to get, get used to. Um, but uh, I suppose a lot of lads have tried, found uh, different ways to, to get around it. And, um, but look, it's been good, I suppose. It's just um, spending extra time with the kids at home. It gives you that bit of extra time to do that. And while you're trying to get the training in, um, and they've given us full programs to do. And, and um, we've been doing some meetings on Zoom with our forwards coaches and, and uh, team meetings and stuff like that, just to keep the rugby brain ticking over so that when we come back, that stuff is fresh in the mind so we can hopefully get going sooner rather than later. And Owen, how about yourself? You're obviously, uh, you retired a, a couple of years back. Um, you moved into the private sector. How has the transition been, first and foremost? And uh, what's it been like uh, being a working man, a normal working man, I suppose, over the last few months? Uh, yeah, the, tra the transition was fine. Um, I suppose I was lucky. Uh, I found something I wanted to do. So it was, it was, I suppose, tough going to get up and running and something else. But overall, it's been pretty good, really. I haven't... Um, now, I suppose, the big challenge with, with what's going on around us. Um, it's uh, I'm working in uh, with an aviation firm, so obviously travel, international travel, things like that are, are um, more of a concern to people in my industry than, than most. So um, I also had a, a new baby boy there about four weeks ago. He's our fourth. So congratulations! Plenty of time to get busy with the family the last few weeks, and I was on. I've been on paternity leave really until until now for the last few weeks. So that's been great, and the weather's been brilliant. So there's been some, I suppose, great times with the family over those period. Um, notwithstanding what's going on in the rest or outside of that, you know. Yeah, uh, as I said in the intro, lads, you, you both uh, are from Limerick, obviously, which you, you had to go elsewhere to play your trade and. Ultimately, um, it culminated with you uh, ending up in kind of comprehensively the, the strongest team on the continent. I think very few people will argue uh, with that and being a very integral part of the success that that team has enjoyed. Um, Sean, obviously you went to Connacht yourself, um, which and obviously moving around between the provinces, while it might have been um, uh, less of a frequent occurrence before, it wasn't terribly unusual, but... Owen, you moved to Watts in 2005, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, prior to that, it wasn't really a well-trodden path for players from Irish provinces to go across the water, and you were probably one of the first to, to go over and really make a, a strong success of things. Um, what was it like making the decision to move away from your home club at that point when not a lot of people had done it before you? Um, yeah, it was, it was devastating, to be totally honest. Um, the, peri the period leading into the decision to go was was. I suppose being told that you weren't you were subverse the requirements at Munster where it's been your dream like you've been there in the terraces you know, 16, 17, 18 your friends you know you were part of maybe 15 people in school who all hoped and thought they'd play for Munster and then there was you know six of you when you left school who kept playing trying to chase it and then you get down to you know and then you were the guy playing and you do carry a certain like you kind of once you get there, you realise that your family are all hoping that, that you deliver in that shirt and your friends are all hoping to deliver in that shirt. And then when, when you don't and it goes badly, it's definitely a tough time. Um, and, you know, for players who've been through that and come out the other end of it, it's like it's like you've, you've got one club players who've got a certain characteristic or a certain resilience in them because they know they've been at one club all the time. But often as well, like, you know, for players who've moved and it's worked, and they've had that low of having to leave somewhere they loved, which is usually what happens in the first instance, but they've bounced back and come back stronger somewhere else. That's something that stands to you for the rest of your career as well, um, because you've fought out of a low, you know, and I think often those players have gone on in, in, in other clubs to, to thrive and do well later in their careers, um, you know, and in some, in kind of a, maybe it's, it's the fact that they learned how to deal with that disappointment so early, um, because there, there isn't, 
there probably isn't a bigger disappointment you can have in your career. Like once that happens, it's a like you know you know what the game is about. You know how ruthless it is. You know how professional it is. You know what's needed to 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 succeed. Um, you have no uh, you have no more kind of you know you won't miss um, or what misconceptions around around what's actually what actually the game's about. So. I think um, that lesson is, is, has proven very valuable to a lot of people who, who've moved and gone and been successful somewhere else. Sean, from your own point of view, moving to Connacht, um, obviously it was in comparison, it was only up the road really, but obviously um, symbolically it's, it's a massive deal to leave Munster for anyone that's been born and bred there. Um, how did that decision come about? Obviously the competition was very fierce. Uh, was it a similar... Was it a similar kind of devastating experience as, as Reds or how did you, did you just see it as uh, a logical next step in terms of um, working towards your end goal of having a successful career? Yeah, I think, like you said, uh, it was probably more of a logical step for me to take in terms of trying to develop uh, my career and the fact that I was hungry to try and get a taste of professional rugby and and if you look back when I was kind of coming through, finishing up my stint in the academy in Munster, there was Jerry Flannery, Dennis Fogarty, Frankie Sheehan. Um, then Declan Kidney brought in another one. There was a couple of injuries and I thought maybe I was going to get a chance. And Declan Kidney brought in um, Andy Kiriakou over from England. And I, I was kind of saying, you know, look, this might be a good option for me to, to kind of, I had a contract in Munster on the table and then Connacht came in and I, it was a very, very tough decision at the time. I, I, I know I, I was done over a few months where I was kind of, you know, rattling my brain a small bit. But I think, like you said, it was the logical step for me to take was to go to kind of try and um, put my best foot forward up there and get game time and get, get professional rugby under my belt. And, uh, you know, it's tough now. You see a lot more of it now where guys move around. And um, I suppose it's a big hot topic at the moment. Guys going from here to there. And is it diluting the the, the the, the kind of rivalry and I don't think it is and I think that's a lot of people from the outside saying that uh, you know there, there's rivalry there no matter where if I if I went to Leinster a guy's moving down because everyone has a point to prove but um, yeah it was a tough decision for me at the time but I think that a lot of players when they were in my situation where if you're looking to take the next step and you're kind of stuck in a position in, in a certain province where you're not getting game time then it, you have you have to look outside the box and see what options are available and I think it was the right decision for me at, at that time in my career. And even just jumping in there, like um, when I joined Munster from Connacht, like I was kind of told something similar as what Sean is saying there, where he decided not to go. Like I remember kind of being told that, you know, um, like Stringer there was there, Prendy was there, Tomas, Frank, there's a few of them around. Like they, there was warning signs there that what Sean was avoiding, I might be walking into. And I kind of ignored them and went ahead and did it and ended up just leaving after two years anyway. So it's a very tough decision to make, you know. And um, I'd say uh, Sean probably made the right one too, getting game time under his belt, you know. So moving on to the rugby lads and to the teams in question. <clears throat> Sean, we'll start with you. Uh, your, your match up against Keith Wood here. Um, was, Woody was kind of, Woody was obviously an outstanding player, but he was kind of, he was before his time in a little bit because he was a he was a very big man, but he was obviously very mobile as well. Um, I think it was who were we talking to earlier? We were we were talking to uh, yeah, I think it was Trevor Brennan, and he was uh, he was giving out that Woody was able to be so good because he scored tries on the wing, and you're no secret to scoring tries in the wing either. But I wouldn't make that comparison really. But uh, what 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 interests me about you particularly is that you're like you're not a huge guy, um, and and you're kind of. Obviously, you're incredibly powerful and, and excellent with the ball in hand, in particular, which is which is your real uh, which is your real. Careful strength. now, careful. You're on you're on dangerous <laughs> ground already here. <laughs> Sean is massive. <laughs> <laughs> but how have you found that as the game has progressed and and guys have gotten bigger and bigger as years have gone on? Uh, has it been something that uh, has ever been a factor in terms of um, how you've prepared? Have you had to make any adjustments over the years based on that? No, but like looking at that team sheet there, no, that matchup was worth the admission fee alone. Like, you know, me going up against Woody. Um, no, like, I suppose in terms of me, I'd be middle of the road. I'm not the biggest guy, not the sm smallest guy. Um, I suppose I've tried to work on my strengths in terms of my power, my speed, 
my handling, I suppose, maybe I picked that up like a lot of GA when I was younger. Um, our guys getting bigger, I think they are, you know, and I think the last few years, it's only when I've kind of stood back a few times and kind of went, you know, this, the size of, of guys has definitely increased in the last few years. So, um, but it uh, looks that's the way the way the game is going. I suppose when you look at the most successful teams at the moment, South Africa winning the World Cup, Saracens, European champions, um, you know, big, big, physical, powerful sides. Um, you would be I'd stuck like... to each other, wouldn't you? If you played against each other, you'd be fucking... <laughs> <laughs> be like where where are the two lads? <laughs> it could be it could be a kick off in that match. Like who's going to kick the ball more? Even though <laughs> I was basically grabbed by the neck by a coach about two or three. I won't say who it was, but two or three years ago, he says if I ever see you kicking the ball again. So uh, and I actually saw some wild kicking from Woody on on Instagram or something there recently. Like you got to you got to you got to give it to him. Like he put in some. I think he had a crazy drop goal at one stage in one of the games. I was just kind of going, this was the loosest thing I've seen in a long time. But um, <laughs> it, uh, it'll be an interesting matchup anyway. You know, I, I pity we're a couple of generations apart. How would you feel about packing down with, the, with Claw in the opposite front row? Um, we, we were asking Trevor who the, you know, who, who potentially the men to watch in terms of throwing fists and that kind of thing. And it was, Spot of the claw with Gollivan behind them could be uh, could be quite disastrous for whoever was in the opposing line. Yeah, and I I saw uh, I think it was like a classic rugby game on on Tina G there recently where it was Munster against Leinster from 2001. Now I think the claw could have still been 35 or 36, and he was still uh, I think he was too long in the tooth for 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 throwing a few haymakers at that stage. But uh, <laughs> him and Mick Galway were were in the pack and. I think it was a who's who of of lunatics like you had the claw, Olive, Quinny, and then a and then a, a Leinster side with Leo Leo Cullen, Eric Miller, uh, Reggie Corrigan. So it was uh, it was an interesting game of rugby to watch to say the least. Yeah, so some of the classic stuff has been excellent, has it? The lads were talking about it was they were showing Monster Neat from two thousand and three. I think yeah, it was the watch that as well. Yeah. Shit, I think I played in that, did I? No. Um, oh, is that not the one where Gaffy was like, "Get him, get him off, <laughs> get him off now"? That was me. I'm pretty sure. No, <laughs> one of my last games ever. <laughs> uh, in in over in Cardiff. Yeah, uh, yeah. over in, in Swansea. Yeah, uh, maybe it wasn't the same game, but it was definitely a game over there where I was ripped off. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny it's funny seeing the stuff now. Like we were chatting earlier about how just watching stuff like kick off received and uh, uh, and the rock. Like I mean, playing back then, Reds as a nine. I mean, the rock, the rock. Yeah, <laughs> digging the ball out. It was a, a different ball game entirely to what it is now. And I, I know I know we give out about the ball being slowed down by uh, the inability to sh- to shoot players out of the way now. But I mean, it was literally like uh, it was like American football. Uh, I'd say. It was quite difficult to hone the skill of getting the ball out quickly like you were able to do. Moving on to you, Owen. Uh, looking at the halfback matchup, it's, the, the back lines in particular um, uh, are, are a really good matchup. How do you feel about Peter Omani being on your wing, first of all? Peter Omani, yeah. What's the story there? So he played wing for, I think, an All Ireland an All Ireland League semi final, probably yeah. circa 2012, I'd say, 11 maybe or 12. Um, and, and he had a very good game. I didn't see the game, but he was he was basically briefed to run over the the opposite winger, who was a friend of mine, and and he, he managed to do it uh, by all accounts. So so it was a very effective selection. But uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't I be just... too. I would be a bit worried now about myself and Raj beside each other with Hendo and the other team. You know, um, <laughs> the few times Raj and I did play together, it was pretty 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 common event for the. <laughs> <laughs> for someone to come and steam and at both of us within within like sixty seconds of the kickoff, so there'd be no surprises uh, what was going to happen here uh, if this game happened. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't know the decent halfbacks there. Yeah, you know. In terms of your overall feeling, um, I'm not sure if you if you if you uh, came across Pat Murray much at all um, in your young days. He was I would have watched him. I would have watched him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was. Uh, Huge star in Limerick, you know what I mean, and produced some great rugby like at times when it was 
Um, you know, the AIL was great at the time. You know, you'd, you'd all be off playing playing games around the country and on a Saturday night, like, you'd be bumping into each other and catching up on, on like, how the games went and uh, slagging or whatever. But it was it was a real buzz um, to the, to the games and, the, and there was fierce rivalries, like... The bus homes, the bus homes yeah. used to be, uh, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was play, I started 19 or 20 playing senior rugby and getting on a bus coming home from Belfast Harlequins. My my eyes were opened, and that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. But um, like, and that's really what like it's hard to find the next. Like, look, everything changes and moves on, but it's it's hard to find that. Um, you know that kind of. I, like kick or, or group like I don't know if, if if teams in Limerick played each other more for example or teams in Munster played against each other more would you get a bit more of that you know I don't know like you know um, but it's a sad it's a pity like they're they're great they were great days you know and like there was fierce rivalry between the clubs like there is between the provinces now um, and for a period there was both you know you had the, the, the rivalry between the clubs and you had the rivalry between the provinces and it all worked for a little while um, but like certainly Pat in those days was was setting the scene alight, you know. Um yeah, there was a lot of a few good fullbacks around the time of the thought like Brian Begley was playing with Old Crescent, Dom McCrady was playing with Gary O. Um and, and Shannon themselves um had a had a Jason Hayes, I think, was another very good fullback for Shannon. Um, you know, so they had some serious players at the time, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's it's very true what you say, and it's um it's a pity really that <clears throat> not that it's been lost, but I think that probably the golden era of uh, the social element of of AIL rugby uh, uh, has probably passed. It's not the same as it used to be. Where like I remember, I probably just got the tail end of it, where you'd play on a Saturday and the lads would be out in uh, you know lads would be out in their club polos or their club shirts. Well, the Gary Owen lads would be wearing their shirts. Everyone else would be wearing polos. Um, and it, it was great, like, and uh, I, I'm glad I got to taste a little bit of it. However, those bus journeys were dangerous, though. I think the I've only had one really bad one, but uh, we were playing Belvedere away, and I think it was my birthday the next day, so they were making me skull a load of drink. But I think the following weekend was Ireland were playing New Zealand in um, in Lansdowne Road, and uh, I had arranged to get tickets off Jerry Mullally, and I don't know what possessed him to give me the tickets when we stopped in the final furlong uh, on the way back down but he gave them to, he handed them to me as we were leaving the pub and I remember thinking Jesus maybe this isn't a good idea now but I said oh, no, I'll be grand so I took them and put them in my in my coat pocket anyway I had a great night didn't remember a whole pile of it woke up the next day dying um, w- w- was sick I'm pretty sure if I recall correctly and it was only at about two o'clock it struck me I wear the fucking tickets so I went up and checked in the bag, no sign of them. Checked in the jacket, no sign of them. <laughs> and uh, I was talking to JP Tucker and he said the last he saw, I was waving them around in the air when I was coming out of the office bar to get him the taxi home. So yeah, I'd yeah. say some taxi driver got very lucky that night and couldn't believe his luck. <laughs> uh, probably took them straight out of my hand and sent me on my way. <laughs> oh. But uh, just to finish up, lads, in terms of a verdict, um, you're obviously biased because you've been selected on... Um, the Ireland 15, but as someone pointed out earlier, because Mick Galway was selected on the other team, it's uh, not beyond the realms of possibility that he selected a deliberately weak team to play against. Uh, so what are your own thoughts on who would win the matchup overall? Owen, you first. If it was a final, we'd win. Yeah. Very good. Johnny? Yeah, I think. Can there's I, enough can I just big, make a point? There's enough, big, there's enough big game players there now for... And obviously, Sean would or like Woody would have to play the full eighty because the bench doesn't look great on on his team, you know. Um, that was always poor coming off the bench. Black could, yeah, he was. He could never handle disappointment of not starting, and that always affected him. He just strong. tried too hard when he came on, and an old yellow card here or there would would be uh, detrimental to their finish, you know. Can I just ask a question? Uh, uh, or me, or me and Owen excluded from the Limerick team because we we burnt our burnt our bridges and won all those trophies in Leinster. Like, is that, why, is that why we were excluded from the Limerick team? Just to, not even on the bench. No, 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 no. Yeah, you'd you'd have to take that up with uh, with Don Lennon. I did think I do think it's it's somewhat odd that Don Lennon picked the Limerick fifteen. Um, Look, I'm not I'm not giving out now because I'm not on the bench on that team either. So uh, you know, I'll take what I'm given. Like. 
Yeah, we, we might uh, we might get some clarification off Donald for that. We one, should uh, be great for an old start though, Sean, to be fair. Like yeah. it's not, it's not, we, we don't have enough of them between us really. Oh so. no, I'll uh, I'll take that now and run with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh all right, lads. Well um thanks very much for, for your time and uh the very best of luck with everything going forward, Sean. Best of luck with the return to training and playing. And uh yeah. Reds are the, the very best of luck with the return to work and I hope uh you and yours all stay, continue to stay safe and healthy for however for long this current um, uh, madness continues. So thanks very much, lads. Appreciate it. Cheers, Doc. Okay.